Put me at dawn, folk at noon. Misfortune's blood is on the room. Turn free bass into crap. We turn hip hop into gangster rap. We're here at the Johannesburg Correctional Services Facility. Today we have the rare opportunity of going inside the men's maximum security section to watch American poet Lemon Anderson perform. This form is part of Urban Voices workshop programs for both male and female offenders. The project features poetry, theatre and skill sharing workshops. We've been working at the correctional centres, especially Sun City, for over four years now. We've largely been working with the female section, but this is the first time that we've come to the male section. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of enthusiasm, there's a lot of talent here and the officials really want to get things going together with the uh, inmates who have formed committees. Lemon is a former convict himself and has risen to fame as an acclaimed artist. Today he hopes to share his experiences to positively influence the inmates. Watch me, Emma 1983 Bob G, New York City's Sunnyvale, Hughes in the Square in the Roxy's. Watch how these American idol signs try to stop me. Hate me when I walk through the door. Love me when I blow up the spot, please, man. When they first see me, they never take me serious till they find out my talent don't come from the color of my skin, but from my whole heart and experience. So watch me. From the age of 16 to 19, you were in and out of prison. I mean, what was happening in your life in that time? I lost my mother. At, at 15 years old, you know, to AIDS and, and HIV and, and her lifestyle. And so, you know, I didn't really have a, a strong family to support me with morals and ethics. So I had to pretty much fend for myself and learn how to try to survive. And I, I, I learned the hard way. 16 years old, I was locked up in a prison like this in America. The only thing I had was my books. All I had was my books. Every book I read, I wrote. Every book I read, I wrote. I wrote my way into everything I wanted to do in my life. I didn't get into those movies because somebody pitied me. I got into those movies because I was talented and I was going to work hard. And no one was going to beat me at getting that job, okay? Just want to let you know that. I go back to myself and read my books. I read how Steve Biko died so we can write what we like. So uh, what made you pick up your first book? The people I looked up to read. You hate the man, but not as much as you should hate the man that hate your sister. But you don't know real hate till you read Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. You don't know what... I wanted to be a free man. I wanted to be a smart man. And so I watched what they did and followed suit. And they read. So I said, all right, well, I got to teach myself how to read. Because if I'm going to get out of this and stay out of this, then I might as well read. And that's the point, is that you got to fight to write. I mean, you got to fight to learn more and more and more because the more you learn the better you get stuck. Because you're only going to be as good as the books you read. You're only going to be as good as the books you read. You're only going to be as smart as the books you read. In terms of Urban Voices we've always looked at like arts with an entertainment focus but it has to have an educational focus. What does it mean to us? Why is it relevant? So we kind of do things that really make an impact that is relevant but they also have to be entertaining. Can you just tell us a bit about how it feels to be back in a prison setting again after you've been out of here? Uh, it feels great to be here, you know, this is a different place. I probably wouldn't do this in America as much as, uh, as people would ask me to do it. Uh, but I do it here because we can show these people that it, being in prison is not about just being black, you know. It happens to anybody. And uh, hopefully we got to share something in the show, you know. We got to share something within the pieces. They got to see heart, you know. What does Urban Voices hope the inmates take away from this experience? Well, what we do hope that they take from this experience is that there is a life out there, there is hope. There are people like themselves, like Lemon Anderson, who has been in jail from 16 years old to 19, age of 19, in and out of prison. That there is hope, you can make it. You don't have to do crime to, to have a life. There is a life beyond crime. And that's what we want. But it's also about people coping with the realities of what they find themselves in. Poverty, um, the class struggle, their own um, gender-based struggles, you know. And interesting enough, it's not just what the inmates take out of it. We've also found that it's impacted, in terms of our work we've done on the female section, it's impacted there on the so-called wardens, as they call them, members and officials, because they start looking at themselves differently. They start looking at the 
offenders that they are supposed to be managing in a different way. And I mean, that was the other side that we never actually saw at the beginning, but we've seen the impact that the workers had in terms of how they relate to each other as officials and offenders. More than lookable, admirable, and lovable, the feeling is undeniable, undefinable, but becomes real and real with every turn of will, even though I lost the steel, I still rebel, you seem to feel my heart, you seem to feel it goes, my heart to yours.